Peas and love my friends and welcome back to my channel. I am Lara B and today I am going to talk to you about blossom and rot. So Alex from Greece sent me a DM on Instagram and he was wondering what the problem was with his tomatoes because he'd been growing them really really well, he had been watering them plenty and taking care of them, pruning them all the time but the fruit had a little dark spot at the bottom that was growing and growing and it made the tomatoes look rotten and gross and it was just damaging all his produce. So he asked me, Larabi, help me! <laughs> and so Larabi came to the rescue and this is a video for Alex and if you too have a problem with your garden that you would like me to solve, Please don't hesitate, just slide into my DMs on Instagram, my name is Lara B underscore Simple Gardening and I will try and solve your problem in a DM or even make a video out of it so maybe everyone else can benefit as well. Alex's tomatoes were really really dark at the bottom and getting really soft and they looked kind of leathery and the skin was getting a bit thick at the bottom and this is a common, common problem, especially with tomatoes and with aubergines and with peppers as well, but I would say mainly with tomatoes. And this is called blossom and rot. Now, Alex, do not worry, because this is not actually a problem that is caused from parasites. It is actually a physiological problem of the plant. So with a little bit of care, you can actually take care of it pretty easily and it should go away with just a bit extra attention when pruning and when watering your plants. Now, blossom end rot is usually caused by a calcium deficiency, and this means that your soil is a bit impoverished from the calcium that is usually naturally present in the soil, and that tomatoes need to grow, because just like we need different nutrients to grow, also plants need a very, very balanced diet and each plant has a different requirement. So tomatoes, in this case, would need a bit more calcium than is currently present in the soil. Other things that can cause rot though are an imbalance in the water levels. So maybe you've been watering your plant too heavily all of a sudden and then leaving it to dry out for a longer period of time. So one way to solve that issue is to just water your plant regularly. So maybe water it once or even twice a day. Personally, during the warmer months, I tend to water my plants in the morning and also in the evening, and I give them a, a heavier um, dose of water in the evening because they can absorb it during the night, and then a little bit in the morning just to top it up. If you water it in the middle hours of the day, usually the plants will not really retain a lot of the moisture that you give them because the water will evaporate more quickly than the plants can suck it up. So it's really, really important that you time your watering correctly and also that you water your plants frequently, but not too much because when you water your plant too much, it will freak out. It'll be like, oh my goodness, there's so much water now, but I haven't had water for like two weeks. I absolutely need to suck this all up and make it last forever. And so your plants start getting diseases that are just caused by its own metabolism trying to optimise its water reserves. So if you want to solve this, just make sure you water your plant at regular intervals and just enough so that the soil is damp. You never want to water your plants, especially your tomato plants, so that the water is overflowing from the pot. You see this? We want this. We love this. We need this. But this, yeah, we don't need this. Also that the soil gets muddy and really, really wet. Another cause of blossom and drought could be heavy storms, which might really, really overwater your plants in the same way that you might have done yourself. And this is kind of something you can't really get around. You just need to wait and to pick off the tomatoes that have been damaged from blossom and rot and then try and be very consistent with the watering and try to protect your plants from storms if possible. And another cause of fruit rot related to calcium deficiency is that the plant grew too fast in its early stages. This can be caused by temperatures rising really, really quickly in your area, which can happen a lot in European countries such as Greece. So maybe Alex, this was your case. And this will have caused the plant to grow more quickly than it can absorb calcium and enough calcium for it to grow healthily. 
And so the way we can solve this issue is by preparing some calcium rich compost and add it gradually to the plant as it's growing just to make sure that it has a constant supply of calcium. Another thing that might cause the plants to grow really quickly alongside a bounce in temperature is an abundance of nitrogen in the soil at its early stages of growth because this really stimulates plant growth and so it makes the plant grow really really quickly and too quickly for it to absorb enough calcium. But now that your plants have blossom end rot, how do you solve it? Fortunately enough, you don't have any bugs or any pests to deal with. So this is just something that the plant will naturally solve and you can just help it along a little bit by picking the rotten fruit and you can chuck it away. No, you need to chuck it in your compost. So the next batch of plants will have all the nutrients that have still been retained in these little fruits and it may be useful for other plants. For example, in the last video, I explained how potato soil is really, really good for growing tomatoes for this exact reason. So the tomatoes will be broken down and will be really, really good for some other plant that you may be growing next season. Once you've picked the tomatoes off, just be really careful, really consistent, and hopefully you will have new, fresh, healthy tomatoes to pick very, very soon, and you'll be able to eat them, and they will be delicious and nutrient dense and plump and juicy, and you will have no more problems with blossom and rot. As you may have seen in my video comparing compost, soil, and potting mix, usually potting mix does have a balanced nutrient profile, but when you have soil from your garden, it might be the case that sometimes there might be some nutrient deficiency, maybe caused by the type of soil that you have, because remember, you can have very different types of soil, and in that video I actually put a soil test experiment that you can try it out yourself, just to know exactly the nutrient profile and the soil composition of your garden soil. And when there is a deficiency in your soil, you can actually add some compost to it or some fertilizer and make it more fertile in order for your plants to thrive and grow. If you want to really, really make sure that your soil is balanced, you can add some compost and you can add some garden compost or some vermi compost. And if you want, you can make sure that there's enough calcium by adding eggshells. Eggshells are so good because they add a ton of grit and a ton of calcium to your soil. And you might have to wait a little bit before the compost is ready with all the broken down eggshells, but it's really, really worth it to consider all these things when making your compost. So remember, if you have eggs, if you have eggshells, don't throw them away. Always, always compost everything because in every little kitchen scrap, you have different nutrients. And the more varied your diet is, the more varied the diet for your plants. So this is, I guess, another incentive to eat a balanced and varied diet and that will be really healthy for you and really healthy for your plants as well. If you want a quick fix though, you can buy some calcium rich fertilizers and these can be just bought at your local garden center or nursery. And usually most fertilizers do have some calcium in them, but if you want, you can go for a calcium specific one. And I'm sure there'll be plenty of options and they're quite cheap and you can just have that as a quick fix and it will completely revolutionize your growth for that period. And would it be a Lara B simple gardening video if I didn't go into the vegetable patch and harvest some vegetables? Well, today, because Alex is harvesting tomatoes, I am also having some tomatoes. And here, I actually have my um, black cherry tomatoes, which have been such a discovery this year because I hadn't ever grown black cherry tomatoes before and they are so cool. So I actually have some here and they are actually insane like the way they are black and red and they are extremely nice and extremely extremely juicy so yeah I'm gonna pick these for sure whoop there it is and then I think there's another one over there that it's ready to pick so whoops where is it here and there we go two black cherry tomatoes and, and there's another one here, but it's not ready yet. So time for a taste test. These are so amazing. Like, I don't know if you can see, but they are insanely, insanely nice. I don't know, they're just so cool. 
Like, how can a tomato plant be like this? This is the kind of blackness you want on a tomato. You don't want any bottom end bright. You want lovely, black, juicy tomatoes. Okay, let's try it. I thought there was like a bug on it. Mmm. So juicy. It's so nice. Mmm. I feel like half of my YouTube channel is just me eating tomatoes. Mm. Harvesting your own produce is the most rewarding thing ever. Like, can you imagine? This was a seed and now it's a fruit that I can eat. I can't even. This is so good. And these black cherry tomatoes are very, very umami. So it's just a very, very peculiar type of cherry tomato that I'd never really had before. And if you can, if you can find them in the local nursery you have, try them out, try and grow them. If you don't, DM me, I might try and send you some, some seeds if you want, if you are interested. Um, I would love to share some seeds with you and maybe you can share some seeds with me and we can try different varieties of tomatoes. And so yeah, message me if that's something you might be interested in. I might even do a giveaway, I don't know, I'll think about it. My YouTuberness is developing now. <laughs> so yeah, let me know if you've tried these before and I'm so, so happy that these are growing really well because it's just so cool like black cherry tomatoes black cherry tomatoes <laughs> i'm also eating a pepper i feel like every time i go into my garden i just end up eating it's just an excuse for eating basically like that's not even lie like i just love eating so much that I made it a hobby to grow my own food. This is the sweetest pepper ever. If you haven't tried the Cornetto Rosso, which are, I think, from Calabria, instead in Italy, try them. Because honestly, it's worth it. They're so nice. And then just chuck it. I'm so happy. It makes me so happy to just eat my own produce. And it makes me even happier to share it with my family and friends. Because I feel it's just like a part of myself, a part of my time that I give away to someone. And it just means so much to me. And I hope people appreciate. So yeah. These are just the joys of growing your own food and being self-sufficient in a few things, yeah. If you also have had issues with blossom end rot, let me know in the comments down below. And if you have any other issue with your plants, remember, slide into my DMs, and I will make sure I cover every single one of you to make sure that all of us have healthy and happy plants. And while you're at it, Follow me on Instagram because there I post so many things every single day, quick tips and you just get to keep up with my garden and you get to see a lot of stuff that doesn't make it to my YouTube. And also if you want to see more of me, follow me on TikTok. My name again is Lara B underscore Simple Gardening and there I post challenges and other quick tips and fun facts and just things to help you along in your garden. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and also press the notification bell so you'll get alerted every single time I post a new video which will be every Thursday at 11am BST. I will now be moving to university so the next videos you will see are going to be so great because I'm going to show you how I grow plants in a uni house. So something that I only stay in, in a, what, for one year and I won't have a big garden and I will try and grow indoors as much as possible and I will show you that you can be self-sufficient in some things even if you don't have a garden. Anyway, that was all from me. I'm Lara Bee.